you know, because you, you, you doubt in yourself, and sometimes you need somebody to push a little forward that you can push yourself. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 222 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today we have Mr. Julio Fernandez. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner, instructor, competitor, and he's made quite the name for himself. We're going to hear more about him in just a little bit. First, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the show, you might want to check out some of our past episodes, some of the other stuff we've got going on. Best place to start is at whistlekick.com. If you're really just interested in the show, that's okay. We don't mind that. You can go to a completely different website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's where we have 221 other episodes for you to check out. And we've got so much more. We're doing everything we can to bring unity and interesting content and great products to the world of the traditional martial arts. And I want to thank you for checking us out today. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. I'm your host on this show. And if you're a visitor to martial arts events, you may have actually met me because I spend a lot of time traveling around, training, teaching, visiting, hanging out. Because let's be honest, martial artists are great people, and I love hanging out with all of you, all of us. I don't know. I, I guess I'm in that group, aren't I? Hopefully, hopefully, I get to be included. I don't know that I thank everyone enough for tuning in. It really means the world to me. Here we are with maybe it's not the milestone that episode 200 was, but 222. It's kind of a fun number, and it's just got me reflecting on everything that's gone on over the last two and nearly two and a half years of this show and how much it has changed not only this business, but my life. So thank you for your support in allowing me to do that. Who would have thought that surfing waves could lead to martial arts? Today's guest, Mr. Julio Fernandez, proves that even when you're doing a completely different sport, it can still lead you to martial arts. He not only turned to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but he trained hard with one of the pioneers, one of the best in this martial art, no less than Carlson Gracie Sr. Having said that, he isn't only a student or a practitioner, but also a respected teacher in his own right. His was not your ordinary journey into the martial arts, but rather than telling you, I'll let him tell you the story. Let's welcome him to the show. Mr. Fernandez, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Glad to be here, man. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Listeners will know that there's a difference in the audio here. They're going to hear a little bit in the background, and that's because we're right here in your academy. We're, exactly. We're, yeah, we have a class going on right now. Yeah. I don't know, about 20 people here, you know, doing some training techniques and that kind of stuff. Yeah, this has been really good. I've been blessed. School is growing, doing really well. My affiliation is doing well, you know, BJJ Revolution team. And uh, we, we, we're doing really well. I'm really glad. That's great. Well, you're saying that with a smile. I don't usually get to see what people look like as, we're, as I'm talking to them. So yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a lot of fun. I always Well, like doing you know, this. I think you have to be positive, you know. And, uh, sure. You know, when you're a positive person, you bring positive people into your life, and uh, you know that's bringing maybe more people, more business mm-hmm. to, to your school. You know, right. like <laughs> attracts like. I've heard some that's correct. Say. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, this is a martial arts show, and you're a martial artist. We're in a martial arts school. That's right. But let's. I mean, let's go way back. Okay. How did you get started? Well, you know, I uh, was about 17 years ago. And I used to surf. I was a professional surfer at age uh, 16. Mm-hmm. You know, started surfing. I was five years old, and my brother was seven. We got a surfboard for Christmas, and uh, you know, that's when he started surfing. Well, when I was like in the middle school, I was a kind of uh, semi-pro, and uh, you know, like by the end of middle uh, high school, I was a, a professional surfer. And then I kind of have a lot of friends of mine doing jiu-jitsu already. You know, and I, I was really curious about that, and I started visiting Carson School, Carson Gracie. You know, because his school was about three blocks from my house, and I used to go over there, see the other guys training, that kind of stuff, and that's when I kind of started slow. I was about 17 years old, yes. It's been uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> yeah. You said you had friends doing jujitsu. You were curious about it. What, what was it? Because I've known some surfers. Yes. They're pretty passionate about what they do. Exactly, yeah. What was it? I mean, did you, did you leave surfing? Did, did no, you, no, okay. no. I, I never stopped surfing. I still surf. You know, kind of, uh, uh, I went surfing in Indonesia. I was in Hawaii with Murilo Bustamante. You know, kind okay. of, uh, I was in California a couple of months ago surfing with Rigo Medeiros. Riley Grace was with me, too. You know, I still surf. I, I have a lot of love for surfing. One of my, my, my favorite sports, my first sport, basically. And... Uh, 
But uh, the, the judicial part of that came because the season can a lot of localism in surf. Uh, you know, I felt the need to train martial arts. And I had a little judo when I was a kid. You know, I, I had two or three years in judo. I was six years old. And then I did a little uh, capoeira, you know, as a, like a Brazilian martial arts. Sure. And that kind of, you know, like I said, one step after the other, you know, uh, I ended up doing jiu-jitsu because I see friends of my, uh, Marcelo Bustamante, Mauricio Bustamante, Murilo's oldest brothers, uh, they used to train jiu-jitsu. And that's a kind of, you know, I had a connection there and that's how I started, you know. So you just saw good people doing jiu-jitsu and yeah. said, this is something I want in my life. Well, good people do it, and uh, kind of, you know, in, in Brazil, uh, jiu-jitsu was uh, uh, known and, uh, as a very effective martial arts. You know, the Gracies, you know, they had the Gracie Challenge. You know, those guys are fighting people uh, twice as big as they are, very strong, and the uh, kind of skinny guy had all these techniques and uh, all these moves they could maybe uh, confront, uh, at least hold their ground against a bigger guy. You know, the mode of Brazilian jiu-jitsu is like a survive then win. You know, and then I said, well, I need to something here because, see, if, I, if I've been taken down, if I'm on my back, if I'm in a bad situation, I can maybe turn the sink around. That's right. the reason that he started doing it, you know, just right. for the, the idea of self-defense, you know. We've had a couple other folks from Brazil on the show. Sure. Either from, from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Caboeira. Yeah. And they talk about their, their feeling that they needed something for defense, mm -hmm. you know, on a, it, it seems like on a, a deeper level than most of us here in America yeah. would think about it. Most of us in America will never be attacked. Statistically, we're, we're yeah, yeah. lucky. Maybe it's getting better, it's getting worse. I don't know. I don't look <laughs> at the numbers. But the way it's been expressed to me is it was a little bit rougher in Brazil. Was that part oh, of yeah, your, yeah. your influence? Well, you know, kind of here in the United States, and to be honest with you, you know, I've been in the United States for 20 something years. I go to Brazil every year, sometimes twice a year. And, uh, but uh, when I moved to the United States, I was about 36 years old. And, uh, you know, uh, if you punch a guy, is a, a, a battery, uh, an assault. You know, in Brazil, uh, you know, sometimes you can get away that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a tougher place. You know, the law doesn't work so well like it works here. You know, you can sue a guy here, maybe in a, a month or so, it's all settled, you know. In Brazil, sometimes to get something in court, it might take it three, four, five years, and maybe somebody put a little money there, and uh, you know, uh, the lawsuit disappears. You know, uh, here in the United States, to be honest with you, I see that the last few years been a change on a level of people uh, consciousness about uh, self-defense, mm -hmm. because I don't know if it's the kind of you know the the world itself is changing, because uh, lo uh, these wars all over the place, you know. But uh, I think that the people are more aware of the need of self-defense. And, uh, the, you know, this is a good thing for my business. Sure. It's, it's sad to see that happening, but I think the United States, uh, uh, you know, is, is growing the, the needs for self-defense. Uh, the, 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 the martial arts itself is growing as a, as a big, big business, you know, because the need for, you know, instruction properly, uh, completely uh, no ledge about uh, how to defend yourself in a bunch of different situations. And I think that kind of, you know, because in Brazil it's harder, it, that's why you see all these uh, people doing uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, because, you see, like I said, you know, the, 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 the arm of the law there doesn't work uh, so effectively like here, you know? Yeah. So you needed an arm bar. Well, you know, you know, arm bar, uh, an echo holder defense, or put the guy down, or you know, if you attack it against the wall, against a car, against a building, how to, uh, you know, turn that situa situation around that you're going to be on top, you know? The idea of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is I kind of survive in the attack, just like I said, survive then win. You know, get in a position that you control the position, or you can uh, live there without marks in your face, you know? That's the idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here on the show, it's... We like to tell stories, and that's what you know. Yeah. I told you before. Wander, go wherever these questions take you. Yeah. If I was to ask you your favorite story from your time training, what would that? Well, be? you know, I have a lot of those stories. You know, I have one that I kind of you know. I was competing uh, the Brazilian Nationals, and I was competing a guy uh, uh, that was really good, and uh, you know, we went to the finals there, and Rickson Grace was the referee. And, you know, this guy, I kind of was competing against him. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine, Paulo Caruso. And uh, uh, he's well-trained, well-prepared. And I had a bunch of fights, but I didn't have the submissions right away. I had to work hard. And this guy, he looks really good. 
And you know, he submitted people like a minute and a half or something like that. You know, we had like five or six fights each guy. And then I went to the finals this guy, you know. And, uh, you know, I said, well, I have to differ my strategy because this guy, this guy is really good on his feet as well. You know, he's judo, you know, has a background of takedowns. And he's finishing this guy's a minute and a half. And I decided that I, could, I, could, I, I had to take him down, you know. And then I kind of match started. I went for my takedown. And I did take him down, but I landed with my, my, my face outside the, the, the mat area. Mm. And I, I cut my eyebrow. And Rickson was the referee, and he stopped the match. And he said, well, the match is over because you have a cut on your eye. And I, I had taken like 80 stitches on my eye. But, but then I said, well, you know, kind of, hey, if you stop the match, I'm the winner because you see, I'm ahead of the game here, you know? And Rickson said, well, but you can't you can, uh, fight anymore, you know, kind of, I have to give the match to the other guy. I said, no, well, call Carson, let Carson make the decision that, you know? Well, Rickson called Carson, Carson went to the mat there, he looked at me, he said, no, he's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I put a little tape on my eye that I could control a little the bleeding, right. and I, I kept fighting. And, you know, kind of, I said, well, if, if I'm going to have stitches on my eye, man, <laughs> I got to make this guy pay too. <laughs> then I went hard on him. I took him down again, passed his guard, that kind of stuff. You know, I, I won the match for uh, good, solid uh, uh, performance. And uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, the Brazilian Nationals. That was really good. I did really, I got the gold medal there. Wow. <laughs> yes. That's great. That's a good story. I never forget that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine not. And, and, you know, there aren't a lot of people who would be able to, even even willing to try to argue their position with names yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, right? But well, to, yeah, not yeah. only to argue, but to, to win. Yeah, uh, yes. And, I mean, that says says a lot about your grit. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Carson was a guy that kind of you know, has a, a fighting spirit, you know. And he used to have a uh, fighting spirit on his guys, you know. Uh, you know, you train with the Carson, and, uh, you know, if you don't compete, if he tell you to compete or fight or whatever, and if you said, well, I can't do it for some reason, well, he used to put you against the wall and, uh, you know, uh, make you feel uncomfortable. Uh, maybe even calling you names, you know. Carson was really, uh, you know, kind of in-your-face instructor, you know. Yeah. Carson was like a guy that kind of, you know, you have to uh, basically do what he thinks is right. And a lot of times, to be honest with you, he was right, you know. Because you, you, you doubt in yourself and sometimes you need somebody to push a little forward that you can push yourself. And Carson was that kind of guy, you know. Mm. Yes. Well. And he's your, is he your instructor now? I, I see well, his name on Yeah, yeah. Well, Carson passed away in 2006, oh, okay. you know. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, he was my instructor. I only had one instructor, basically. You know, I only trained one school, Carson Gracie School. Okay. And he was my only instructor. And, uh, you know, uh, I was promoted to Black and Bell in 1988. And, uh, yeah, I only trained one place. I only had one instructor. Yeah. Carson Gracie Sr. <laughs> yeah, it's... I mean, as an instructor now, you know, I mean, sometimes you have to push people in a way that they're not comfortable with. Because yeah, well, you have experience, you have knowledge that they don't have yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people have a tendency, you know, to, to, to train with the people they feel comfortable. And I don't blame them. But uh, here and there, maybe you have to push yourself a little more because that makes you m m more confident about your skills, you know. Right. And uh, you take a punishment today, you know, uh, tomorrow you can perform better. But I always try to tell the guys, the guys that had to go under control. That's it, you know? There is no superstar here, you know? Because, you see, uh, I think uh, what happens is that, kind of, you know, people have to develop an a, a, a ideology that they belong to a team, and then I kind of, you know, they, they, they work for the team, not for themselves. You know, that's what I used to do with the Carson. The Carson developed the spirit, you know, the Carson Gracie team, a rebentação team. That was the kind of the team name, you know, was a, that was the best team in the world back in the day, you know? And that's what I try to do here with my students. Well, I see, you know, team on your, on your academy shirts and, yeah. and, and, you know, it's on a lot of the guys' geese. Yes. What does that mean to you that, you know, because m most schools outside of BJJ aren't going to talk about what they do as, as a team mentality. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's considered an individual sport. And, and, I mean, sometimes we even... Karate, Taekwondo, other arts that I'm familiar with will put down almost these walls in between to say what I do is very different from what you do. What does it mean to you yeah. to say that you're a team? Well, the thing here, you know, kind of like a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you need a training partner all the time. You know, we don't have caras, we don't have a techniques that you can repeat and look in the mirror. Mm. 
you know, we develop a system that you basically need a training, you need a training partner. That training partner, uh, you're gonna develop a training, uh, a friendship with him because you see that kind of, you, you need to train to somebody. And you know, in my school, I try to make people that they can train with anybody, any level, and they feel comfortable, you know, that they can develop a, a, a good technique, you know. Well, to do that, they have to work as a team, you know. And, well, because the stop is growing so much, you know, uh, we have people affiliated to, to my team, and I have a training partner, Rodrigo Medeiros, in California. We uh, started a team called the BJJ Revolution Team. We have about 80 schools uh, 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 worldwide, you know, uh, schools in Brazil, uh, Australia, Canada, uh, you know, uh, Ireland, all over the place. And, uh, you know, that way we have the sport growing uh, and our team is spreading the, the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know. And I kinda, it helps us and it helps them, you know. I think that kind of is like, uh, you know, we're giving to people the opportunity to, 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 to uh, increase their knowledge of the sport, help other people to get better, and on the other hand, well, it helps us to, to you know, to, to feel good about themselves. And, uh, you know, on top of that, making a little money, you know, when you're in a business, you know, you're not, you're not in a business to lose money, you know, kind of stuff. Well, they help us, we help them, and that's a kind of, you know, that's our team, BJJ Revolution team, you know. It's doing really well. Good. <laughs> Yeah, yes. that's great. Yeah. Glad to hear. Okay. A lot of times in martial arts, people talk about how it makes you a better person. It makes you, you know, we were just kind of talking about positive yeah. energy and yeah, yeah. and staying happy and all yeah, that. You recording it already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, yeah, we're we're recording. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just Sounds I just good. let it run. No, that's good. I just good. let it run. We'll we'll yeah. chop out that part. Where, okay. Where we took a break. Uh, how has martial arts made you a better person? Well, you know, kind of one thing that uh, it helped me a lot is to settle, you know, kind of because I see I kind of, when I was young, I was all over the place. My brother's two years uh, older, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, we surfing, we going to these places, you know, party, you know, and in Brazil people start earlier than here, <laughs> you know? Yeah, just there. I heard that. Yes. And, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I was all over the place. And uh, Jiu-Jitsu made me, I kind of get a little more uh, conscious about my, myself, the environment that um, you know, uh, I'm moving around it, where I am, what I'm doing. Uh, and uh, uh, it made me think about uh, uh, taking care of myself better, that I could uh, uh, you know, be in a better shape as well. You know? Because uh, you cannot leave a, a party one, one, one night and train you just the morning after because uh, you know, maybe your body's not going to perform as expected. And then on top of that, it is the longer term uh, results of abusing your body, right? And I kind of you know martial arts is a kind of, I think is a way to make people live like a healthier life. Because see, if you want to keep training martial arts, well, like I said, you know, you can't uh, uh, go to mass and be a sinner. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to, to, you know, to pray uh, something and doing something else. Whatever I tell my guys here, I try my best to follow that code, you know. Uh, I have to, 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 you know, martial arts is for something for me that uh, I believe it is uh, making myself more aware of my surroundings, uh, being a better person, and uh, teaching that to, to my students. That's about it, yeah. yeah. Cool. One of the things that's kind of universal mm -hmm. in, I think, in life is going through tough times. I, I haven't met anybody that hasn't been through some, some oh, tough yeah. stuff. Yeah. But as martial artists, we seem to have this unique toolbox of experience and discipline to call on yeah. to help us get through those tough times. Would you mind sharing a story about when something didn't go right for you and how you were able to lean on your martial arts, whether that was some kind of physical event or you know something that happened that was emotionally difficult? Yeah, well, you know, uh I've been married for 20 something years, you know, and kind of, uh, uh, well, actually 38 years. And I uh, always practice martial arts. And martial arts, uh, you know, uh, like everything in life, you know, work, uh, uh, relationships, family, you know, you have some times that are kind of, uh, you, you devote more time to them, sometimes less time to them because you, see you have a lot of going on around. But, you know, kind of, uh, I would say that, uh, 
you know, to be honest with you, you have to first uh, see what kind of a uh, problem that I have. Can I solve the problem by myself? Do I need help or not? You know, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, my shorts for me is a way for me to release stress, you know, uh, because you see, when I come to a class here, I don't think about anything else but the class that's going on. You know, I kind of uh, remove all from my head and I, you know, I have some time that I come here stressed with, uh, you know, my bills to pay, uh, whatever it is, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, and then I think about uh, this kind of stuff. And when I start teaching or training or doing this uh, uh, martial arts stuff, I kind of, uh, I remove that from my, my, my conscious and I kind of, you know, I have a, a break that I can, uh, you know, keep my head clean, you know. And that's a kind of, it helps a lot to, with the person, you know, kind of. But like I said, you know, kind of you have to see what is the level of uh, uh, stress or problems. I don't know, uh, you're depressed or something like that. You might need professional help. If you're not, well, you know, kind of day-to-day -day stuff, martial arts help you to do that kind of stuff. Because you kind of, you know, you're trying to uh, keep it separated from whatever it is outside that when you do a training, you release that, uh, you know, during the training. You punch on something, or you kind of grab the guy, you're kind of moving around. That release tension, stress, uh, frustration, you know, stuff that goes uh, around mm -hmm. that kind of might can solve that right away. But the training might help you to kind of at least uh, 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 think that, well, you know, I have the tools that I can um, solve the situation. You know, and I think martial arts make people stronger in that kind of way too. Not only for the uh, physical aspect of that, but the mental aspect of martial arts. Martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu helped me a lot. You know, kind of, uh, I tell you, man, kind of, you know, over the years, if he didn't have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, <laughs> I think I would be a crazy guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a lot of martial artists would say the same thing. Oh yeah, like, is that, that kind they of... wouldn't know what to do yeah. without it. I, yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. Oh yeah, sure. man, I, in Brazil sometime I couldn't, I had a heavy bag inside my house. And, uh, you know, sometimes I couldn't train for some reason. Sometimes I was late from work. I was going to college too sometimes. I got married at 22. You know, kind of, I didn't have the flexibility to go, oh, I'm training today and go there. Sometimes I was late. Sometimes I couldn't go to class. Sometimes I didn't have my car or whatever, or, you know. And I used to go to that uh, room. I had a back room in my house. There was a really small room. I would put the heavy bag there and punch the heavy bag and kick the heavy bag and elbow the heavy bag for about 45 minutes just to release the tension that I had on me, you know. <laughs> and that's kind of helped me a lot. The, what I try to say is that kind of, you know, a martial arts is something that if I didn't have that, you know, I don't know, man. I kind of I would be, like I said, crazy, you know? <laughs> yes. I get it. I get it. I bet most of the people listening get it too. Oh, yeah. I think we're all, in the we're same all boat. similar. We're all in that boat for sure. Yeah. When you think about the people who were <clears throat> instrumental over your, your martial arts career, I mean, obviously... You know, there's, there's, I'm guessing, number one on the wall right yeah, there. Yeah, Carson Gracie, yes. But aside from him, mm -hmm. who else was really important in, in your martial arts upbringing? Well, you know, to be honest, you, Carson Gracie was number one because, I kind of, you know, he's a kind of, like I said before, he's a kind of, he, he, the guy had like a, such a wire spirit that I kind of, you know, uh, uh, he, he, the, the never give up spirit that I kind of, you know, was my, my inspiration, you know, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, another thing that kind of that really inspired me, even that uh, he kind of he, he never practiced martial arts on his life, was my father. You know, my father was raised during the uh, Spanish Revolution. You know, and um, they had nothing. Uh, you know, uh, Franco, uh, the dictator, there killed a bunch of people, and my father was ten years old, and he used to tell me the stories how to survive during that time. You know, the war, the Spanish War, how many people died, ten years old you know, trying to collect potatoes in a, in a field to have a soup for one week, you know? And I kind of, that, that kind of spirit, you know, the, the spirit of the warrior, the, the never give up spirit, you know? That, I, I transitioned that to martial arts too, because see, when I think about uh, uh, if I am competing, if I am uh, uh, going to fight something, or if I have a, to address a situation, I basically think about uh, my father and Carson, because my father had all the odds against him and he was a successful person. Mm -hmm. Carson, because he had a warrior spirit, the never give up spirit, that I can, you know, if they put you down, you always stand up again, you know? 
And I kind of, those are two big influences in my life that I would say uh, made me a stronger person uh, mentally, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are the two inspirations that I had. Carson Gracie Sr. and my father, you know. That, that warrior spirit, do you think that's something that can be taught or is that something you're born with? Well, I think it can be taught, you know. I teach my, my, my students here and the kids, you know, when I go to the kids' classes, I have, a, you know, a lot of kids here. I have a three uh, different group of ages here, and we have a lot of kids in our kids' program. And what I teach the kids is that, kind of, you know, I, I, the style that I teach I call uh, tough love. You know, I love the kids. I love every kid here. They're all the same for me, but I try to make them tough. I have them spoil each other. I have them putting themselves in bad situations, try to kind of, you know, uh, get out of the, 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 the bad situation and make it then, if they, they, they're not doing correct, I make it then uh, do it correct. I make it then repeat. If they're late for class, they have to be punished. They do push-ups or they do uh, jumping jacks, whatever they do, you know. Uh, I try to make the kids uh, tough because, you see, things just don't come easy, you know. I think that in life, you have to work hard to achieve your goals, you know? Uh, stuff that's handled to you, just like they say here, uh, easy come, easy goes, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I make my kids here, you know, the kids program and my adults program, uh, they have to achieve uh, the goals, you know? And to achieve the goals, well, you have to work hard because you see there is no gifts in life. Hard work and determination. That's what I kind of make people kind of, you know, reach their goals. That's a, the true thing that I think I kind of, you know, that's my teaching style, tough love. Love everybody, you get tough on them. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I love it. No, I, competition. Yeah. I know you've got quite the, the list of accomplishments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell us about a couple, a couple of the competitions. You mentioned one yeah, yeah. that was really important to you. Maybe tell us about a couple others, but more so why. Why is competition something that I'm assuming you enjoy, but why is it also important? Well, you, you know, the, the, the thing here in competition, you know, kind of, and I competed back in the day in surfing as well, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, I always compete. I, I compete in soccer, you know, uh, uh, amateur, uh, you know, uh, I played semi-pro league in the soccer in Brazil. And I did this, you know, when, since I started, Carso put me to compete, you know. I didn't know, uh, you know, kind of, you know, anything about competition until I joined Carso school. Uh, talk about jiu-jitsu competitions, right? And uh, the thing here that I like in jiu-jitsu, uh, because you see soccer is like a, a teamwork, right? The, the 11 guys in the field to play soccer, you know. But in jiu-jitsu, you're basically against one guy. And uh, sometimes you have five, six, seven matches there to get to the top. You know, it makes you kind of, you have to endure. You have to uh, develop a, a resistance. You have, a, you know, to have a committed to take a punishment, and, you know. And eventually, you know, you race to the top, you know. Uh, competition make you tougher. You don't know who you're fighting, you don't know who you're competing. They call the name and you stand in front of the guy and that's got it going, that kind of stuff. And uh, I think it's a great way to make people better, you know, because you see a kind of, uh, you can train any time in the school with a bunch of guys and feel really good, but when you go to a competition, you have to fight other people, that kind of, that kind of stuff, it makes you a kind of, you know, a lot tougher because you want to bring your A game, you know? Mm. You're not here in the school, anything goes wrong, okay, oh, thank you very much, you stop the match. No, you know, <laughs> the match doesn't stop until one guy wins. That's a, you know, basically that's what happens, you know? Sure. And uh, I tell you, that kind of, you know, I would recommend people, and I tell my guys here, you know, that uh, young people should be competing. Maybe the guy is starting a little older, you know, I don't push them too much. But if they're younger, I try to push them to compete and fight because I think you kind of, you know, they're going to make it then, uh, one, humble, you know, mm -hmm. two, uh, respectful for the other guys that are there before then, and three, you're going to make it them tough, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's There's it. a theme with everything for you. It's about exactly. making people tougher. Oh, yeah. you got to make it them tougher here. That's what they come here for, right? We're not playing ping pong here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes. No. No, that's for sure. If you could train with anyone that you haven't, somebody alive, somebody that's passed away, who would that be? Well, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, I came from the Gracie family, right? I, uh, you know, uh, Carlos was my own instructor, you know, but I kind of, I, I have the 
put most respect for the Gracie family because this is the guys that basically started the, 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 you know, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu system. You know, they call it the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, you know, because they think it's different than uh, the, the, the Jiu-Jitsu itself. Uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is even a little maybe different than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu itself because, see, uh, so many people teaching now that, uh, you know, they, f they kind of forget about the, 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 you know, the, the three anchors of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Self-defense, uh, combat, and sport Jiu-Jitsu, you know? This is the three levels of uh, 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 Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the Gracie style. Just like the three levels of fighting, you have the stand-up, you have the clinch, and you have the ground. See, the Gracie uh, logo, the triangle, is basically in a tripod, the balance, mm -hmm. right? That you find in, a, in, a, in your technical skills, you know? Uh, I think a kind of the Gracie family is a kind of started this, and if I could go and train maybe with Rickson, that would be really good. I kind of uh, Rickson's a great guy, he's a good friend of mine as well. Uh, Riley Gracie too, a great guy. Uh, we surf together, and, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, I like those guys. I think you know Rickson and Riley. Maybe with the two guys that I would train with them because mm -hmm. I kind of you know. I think they they know the stuff, and uh, at the same time they they have a really good technical knowledge. They are nice people. They are gentle with the uh, the, instru the, the instructors, the students, and I kind uh, uh, and I like to hang out with them because mm -hmm. <laughs> that'll be great, you know. Yeah. yeah. Always nice to train with people that you respect and are good people to hang out with. Too. Exactly, exactly. You know, kind of yeah. you gotta you gotta you know you, you try to to commingle with the people that kind of the, the, you feel good about them. You know, kind of you know, sure. if you go out to the people you don't feel comfortable, man, you gotta find maybe different company. You know. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. Totally. Are you at all a fan of martial arts movies? I did watch a bunch of Bruce Lee movies back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, I did watch Karate Kid, you know. Uh, and uh, here and there, I watched the one, um, a Chinese movie, the, the guy, uh, I think it's uh, Wing Chun. Uh, I can't remember the, the title of the movie, but it's, it's on Netflix. And uh, The Dragon something, I can't remember, you know, kind of. But Crouching that, Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Yeah, uh, maybe that's it. Yeah, the guy is a kind of, you know, the, he's a Chinese guy. Uh, he, he does like, a, you know, a, a bunch of uh, fighting movies, you know, a kind of, uh, he's on Netflix. I can't remember the name, but I kind of, you know, I do watch it here and there, you know, kind of, you know, because, uh, uh, well, j just for the, you know, the, the physical aspect of that, the, you know, the energy and I kind of, you know, they usually start with the guy in a bad situation, bad, bad place, and then I kind of, they survive and I kind of go to the top, you know, it's like a, it's like an inspirational movie, you know, yeah. and I, I like to watch those movies, Bruce Lee, you know, kind of watch a bunch of those, you know. <laughs> Was Bruce Lee at all influential on you? I mean... Well, you know, to be honest, you know, really, because it's a kind of, you know, uh, I didn't do karate, I didn't do uh, uh, like a styles that kind of, you know, more like, you know, the uh, uh, Eastern styles, you kind of, you know. Even the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they say, start in India or maybe Japan, you know, I did that in Brazil, that's South America, you know. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, I never had the opportunity to train the kind, you know, the, this kind of uh, uh, other styles, you know, Kung Fu or Wing Chun or something like that. And uh, I do respect all the styles, mm -hmm. you know, but it's something that I didn't have any, any uh, a contact, you know. Sure. And um, that's why I'm not influenced by that, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, aspect of the, the martial arts, cool. you know. Yeah. How about books? Any martial arts books that are, or influential books, inspirational books? Yeah, you know, I kind of, uh, over the years, I kind of, you know, uh, I had a bunch of people coming here from wrestling. You know, because a lot of wrestlers, uh, uh, they got older, they kind of, uh, they transitioned to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because, you see, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has the takedowns. It's about, uh, you know, the, the Brazilian takedowns take because the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is like a hybrid style, right? right? You know, we incorporate Judo, we incorporate Greco-Roman, we incorporate freestyle uh, wrestling. That means some of these guys, they feel kind of acquainted to the style mm -hmm. that they, they see a lot of similarities, you know? Right from the ground to the control to the take it downs. And uh, a lot of these guys, they come to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I uh, you know, kind of, uh, over the years, I kind of, I'm curious. And you know, if I go in and check something, if I go to store with my wife, usually I don't buy too many books. You know, if people give it to me, good. But uh, 
I'm not really into buying. But when I go to Barnes and Noble or whatever, if I sit around there, if they have like a wrestling books or Greco-Roman books, I try to watch those and see the techniques. Sure. You know, and I had on my school here people teaching wrestling for a while. You know, okay. yeah, I had a couple, a couple of guys here. One was in Olympic trials. The other one was a uh, two times uh, uh, or American. You know, we had the wrestling classes here for many years. Mm -hmm. You know, and I incorporate some of that with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like I said, it's a, a hybrid style. Another thing here, Carson Gracie Jr., mm -hmm. Carson's son, he was a, a silver medal uh, uh, Pan American champion in Caracas, Venezuela. You know, mm -hmm. we had a lot of wrestling back in the day. Carson mm -hmm. was the only guy that I started training with no gi back in the 70s. I'm talking about 1975, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu was always the gi. Carson had no gi classes. That's something that kind of, you know, nobody ever heard about that, you know. But uh, I do like it, you know, if I want to uh, read something or take a look on something, I would say maybe wrestling because I can bring that to the, you know, w what, I, what I have already, you know? Yeah. Yes. Makes sense. <clears throat> what are your goals? Well, my goal is to live a, a, a life uh, that, uh, you know, I can provide my family with a good lifestyle, you know, uh, you know, have uh, some free time that I can spend with my family, you know, and at the same time, help people to uh, reach their potential, you know. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, you know, uh, have a, a good, uh, healthy, uh, productive lifestyle. Because it's a kind of, you know, to be honest with you, if a guy comes here, he doesn't have money to pay the classes, you know, I tell him to get a job. <laughs> you know, that's why I, 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 I tell people here, you know, there is no handouts. You know, I want people uh, uh, productive. People that kind of you know, they they active in the community, uh, people that they 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 they, they care about uh, family values, honest people. You know, mm. uh, I I like to have good people around me. You know that I can teach that uh, to the next generations, and I can teach that to my grandson. You know, and I think that's my goal. You know, to be around that I can help other people to get better, and maybe kind of you know uh, reach the potential faster than I did. You know. Yeah, I kind of make the new generations better people. That's, that's my mission, you know? Mm. Yeah. A good one. Yeah, man. What parting advice would you give to the people listening? What, what? Parting advice, words of wisdom. I mean, you've, you've given a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout, but close well, us know, out. Yeah, okay. Well, something that I kind of know, I read one time, and I have that, uh, you know, uh, uh, I put that, uh, I wrote it down, I put it on my, my, the board of my office here. Gentleness is the greatest strength, you know. That's something that kind of, you know, uh, you know, you can be really tough. You can be the best fighter in the world. You can be, you know, a person that, you know, nobody can touch. But that doesn't mean that, you, you know, you, you can't be gentle. You can't be nice to people, you know. And uh, my advice to people is to be humble about their, their knowledge, you know, because, uh, you know, people keep training. They, you know. They, they're competing, they try to get better. You can never say that you're the best in the world, right? And you have to be humble about what you, you know, help other people to reach their potential, you be gentle. You know, like I said, gentleness is the greatest strength. That's my, my advice I can give to anybody. Be gentle to people, well, you're gonna have back because I see that kind of, you know, you be nice to people, you, you're gonna find people to be nice with you. Mr. Fernandez is truly a multi-talented individual who has no shortage of work ethic. He certainly gives us an example of how teaching martial arts can completely, and in a positive way, consume your life. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez, for coming on the show today. We've got some pictures and some other things over at the show notes page. You can find that at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check that out. You can also find us on social media. We're at Whistlekick pretty much everywhere you could imagine. And don't forget, we're always looking for suggestions for future guests. Nearly every episode we bring you now comes from a guest suggestion, whether that be an introduction to someone that we interview or a topic that someone asks us to talk about. That's me to talk about. And I appreciate that. We appreciate that. Not only does it help us bring you the content that you most want, but frankly, it makes our job easier. <laughs> That's all for today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing this episode. Thank you for all that you do as part of this community and for the martial arts. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.